the Joe Rogan experience. When you were talking about how everyone with a six-year plan, it's not going to work. It's never going to work. It seems to me that with the romanticism of the cults and the way that it's ingrained in the culture and that they, they look at these people like folk heroes, that this is a generational problem. It yeah. seems like, like a many generations before it changes and calms down. And I, I would struggle to, to think of what would be the thing that could cause it to calm down. Like what, what could be the catalyst for change yeah and and more so than things kind of uh th things are getting even more complicated now with uh mi migrant caravans going through through mexico now and now you have all these displaced uh, people from south america now adding on to the problem mm. of an already existing how big is the caravan we hear about it on the news like from fox news talks about it like f scare tactics okay so um i was i don't know and people can fact check me on this but i was probably one of the first ones to publicly say that they were going to go the first caravan is going to go straight to tijuana everybody was no nah, they're not going to go straight to tijuana they're this is too far off they should just go to texas and they went straight to tijuana and uh, you know they, they were about three thousand strong when they got there and uh, maybe a bit more and you know a uh, bunch of memes came up because of it uh, uh, as they were going through all the mexico most of the people were pretty welcoming because they weren't going to stay you know they were like mm -hmm. you know here's a water like when somebody's doing a jog a running right. marathon they would hand a bottle water bottle and you know good riddance they finally got to tj and tj is very conservative like politically it's very conservative place and they met with a wall of protesters wearing Make Tijuana Great Again hats. No. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. And I may or may not have produced a few of those myself and handed them out. And all of a sudden, you see the mayor of Tijuana with a Make, a, Make Tijuana Great Again hat on his head. Wow. And the reason why they were so adverse to these guys coming in is that uh, they were a lot of them gang members, you know, 14th Street gang members. The reason why they didn't go the other route is because they would have to have crossed Los Zetas territory, which is a cartel that has problems with the 14 gang. So they were just curtailing that. Mm. They were complaining about the food they were getting at the shelters. <sighs> this is a third world country feeding third world migrants, and we were feeding them uh, tortillas and beans. And there's a famous lady that was like, I'm not going to eat this. This is pig. You know, it's pig meat. <laughs> I'll do this. Make Tijuana great again. <laughs> so <laughs> it's trolling on a, another level. Wow. Uh, so um, these guys came in, but people started calling Me the, the people from Tijuana racist. The brown people from Tijuana are racist against other brown people. Wow. And you would see some of the, the uh, you know, some of the news agencies from the U.S. come down and volunteer groups, hippies, you know with uh, sending all their donations to these people in some of these migrant caravan camps, they would grab the donations, turn around and sell it on the backside. Uh, you know, all of these things they would sell on the backside. So we, we would, they were, we had just absorbed about uh, 2,000 or 3,000 Haitian immigrants after the earthquake in Tijuana, no problems at all. They're integrated into the culture. All of a sudden now we have Haitians in the culture, you know, no, no problem at all. But these guys came in and they were really kind of disruptive in that way, right? So, you know. Do you think it was because of all the attention they were getting? Yeah. Uh, th that's what they wanted, you know. They wanted to create some sort of situation on the border, so they rushed the border a few times. Uh, I was I was uh, around there when they, the famous picture of the lady with the kids running towards yeah. the border happened. It, uh, they were throwing rocks at the border patrols, the p p border patrol guys, and that's you know they got the gas in you know in response. And, and that's when she was running away. Yeah, and they had so a they lot had of people been there throwing rocks. Yeah, yeah, they threw rocks constantly. That was their thing. And it's funny how a photo can give you a totally different perspective. Uh, again, anybody that's doubting any of this, go down to Tijuana and ask the people from Tijuana. The Tijuana people did not want those people there. They saw them as disruptive. Crime went up. One of the encampments that they have was next to a school. The school had to be shut down because of all the needles and stuff that was getting getting found outside of the playground in the school. It was a massive nightmare. And then we would see it on the news, and it was like flowers and, um, you know, on the, the, the narrative. They, yeah, the narrative was like, well, I don't know what these guys are talking about. <clears throat> well, Trump is such a polarizing figure that anything that would, <coughs> would be – anti-immigration like that like uh, anti my they, they yeah. just don't even want to hear it but they you know the 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 weird thing is how so a lot of people uh mexicans like trump you know yeah <laughs> which is really 
Well, yeah. Why is that? I think uh, the whole our, we're, "I'm going to defend our people" type thing. Mm -hmm. That's that's they like that. Yeah, and a lot and people have to remember that most Mexicans are very conservative. You know, Catholic conservative mm. guys. So it kind of resonates with them a little. But you know, again, we're divided as well as you guys are politically. So there's a lot of a lot of to the left type uh, leaning people down there. So they, you know, again, narrative, you know, divide and conquer. But the the people on the left, what is their perspective on the migrant caravan? Oh, support it, you know, uh, you could open the borders, you know, let them. But through. they're not boots on the ground. No. <laughs> well, they're not not that you're not boots on the ground. Their their cities are not the ones that are hosting all these people. Right, right, right. They're not right there yeah. while it's going down. They don't have a realistic perspective. Of yeah, it. so it's just, it's just it's a narrative. So imagine these the, this caravan came into TJ and affected the businesses, the cross border and tourism business of all the people that live there. Mm -hmm. So a lot of businesses actually closed down because of these people coming in. Really? And yeah, and the only reason they came in. You know, was to disrupt and create an international scene, which is what exactly what they did. So, did they plan on actually trying to get across, or they they they, they were planning on jumping the fence and claiming asylum on asylum on the other side? And mm. the famous uh, lady Frijoles that I kind of made famous on my Instagram account, she jumped the fence, claimed asylum, went to Texas, and then her and her sister assaulted somebody somewhere, and then she got arrested, got deported, probably. <laughs> so, you know. That's kind of the story of these people. And then you would attract some of these people on social media. So they would be all poor in the Maverick Caravan uh, uh, videos they would have on the news. And then you would see them on their social media accounts from back home, like Louis Vuitton bags and stuff like that, you know. Mm -mm. Maybe a fake one, but still, you know, they were, they were fronting. They're flossing. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a weird dynamic on the border. And, and, and as far as uh, I think it's being utilized in a lot of ways as a uh, political type thing is currently because of the president you guys have up here.